Welcome to Dorset. Today we're in a field of rape and we're here to shoot the Dutch barn. Great to see you all again, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so pleased to be able to bring you to one of the most iconic scenes that there is in Dorset. This is the Dutch barn and it's got rapeseed in here. And this is a, a rarer occasion because this only happens once every sort of three to four years because of crop rotation. There's usually corn in this field or barley and uh, it's obviously a completely different look. It's all sort of green or when the corn has eventually sort of turned to a golden color and it's a great look but nothing tops rapeseed in this field. It looks absolutely fantastic. And we've chosen the best possible day to shoot it as well. What I try and do with this particular shot and the way to do it in my opinion is, a lot of people will shoot it with a clear sky, you know, and that looks nice. You've got nice contrasting, you know, colors with blue and yellow, so it is effective, but nothing beats shooting it with some nice white fluffy clouds in the background and some dappled light coming in. It gives this beautiful shadow spread across here and then beautiful highlights on the rapeseed itself. It's stunning and I can't wait to bring you a shot later on. Now, this is hardly a, a secret shot. It's a very, very well-known shot out there, and I'm sure you've probably seen it a hundred times, but uh, it is quite popular. There is a lot of people that usually come down here, but we've chosen a relatively good day, and we're shooting around about sort of two, three o'clock in the afternoon, which is usually the last time that you'd want to shoot. But for once, this is a shot that we don't want in the golden hour. It's not particularly good at sunrise, not particularly good at sunset, but when you've got this dappled light moving across it, it's fantastic, and I absolutely love it. So this is the best possible time for us to come down here and shoot. Might seem odd, but trust me, give it a try. Now, the great thing with rapeseed is you're pretty much likely to have a field really, really close to you because in the UK alone, we grow over a million tons of this stuff every year, and it's worth roughly half a billion pounds to the farming industry. So it's really, really quite an extensive crop that grows everywhere. You've only got to go to the countryside and you're going to find absolutely acres and acres of it uh, dotted around. Now, it's a bit of an unusual one, and I don't usually advocate sort of going into private land or anything like that. This is private. If you treat it with respect, if you make sure you only walk down the, uh, the rows of the tractor tracks in here, I think you'll probably be okay. I can't say that 100% because I've never spoken to him, but uh, you know, as I say, just standard practice really. Leave only footprints, don't damage any of the crops, and just use these tracks to get in and out and you should be absolutely fine. Today, we're shooting on the long lens. We've got the 100 to 400 on. And the reason I've got that is I want to get quite a way back from the barn because there's a lovely sweeping hill that's got the little tractor tracks inside it. And I'm really trying to get that in. The closer you get to the barn, the more you lose that and you don't get quite the same effect. So I've come a reasonable way back. Shooting on, uh, as I say, the 100 to 400, going to be a variety of different focal lengths varying from 100 to about 200 mil on this particular one. Uh, we're going to shoot at an aperture of around about f11, possibly down to f8 because the only thing we're really interested in is the barn itself that's the sole focus of this particular shot we're not worried about focusing in on the rapeseed uh, flowers at all that really doesn't matter i mean it's literally just going to pull your eye straight to that barn and that's what you want to be in pin sharp focus so we're going to go for a relatively wide open aperture on this one one of the other things we're doing today as well, we're using a polarizer. And the reason we're using that is we really want to add some punch to that sky that we've got there. Um, it will really emphasize the blues in it. And of course, blue and yellows, they're complementary colors. They really, really work well to get together. So uh, we really want to emphasize that. And because I'm shooting on the long lens, there's no worry about sort of using a wide lens and getting a big polarizer mark right in the center of it. So it's uh, working out absolutely perfect for us at the moment. Now, I must apologise that you might hear a little bit of uh, road noise going on here, and uh, we are literally right by the side of a main road, so uh, it is quite noisy, so apologies for that. But um, 
it's one of those locations that I just can't miss. And hopefully with any luck, we're going to get a real portfolio shot out of this particular one. I'd be really, really pleased if we do today. But uh, I had to show it to you because it's such a rarity and uh, I just absolutely love this shot. It really is something special. The key to this shot is a little bit of patience more than anything. You've just got to wait for the light to sweep across and just catch it right. And my preferred method is to get it with the light just on the barn itself and then everything else in shadow. That really is quite an effective way to shoot it. But you can do all sorts with this one. You can have the barn in the shadow and the rapeseed in the front of the scene in the light. And it really is effective. Either way, it's all about the light on this shot and the light traveling across it. It really does make it look absolutely stunning and very, very dramatic. Well, I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm going to get shooting while I can because whilst we've got these epic conditions, I don't want to miss them. So I'll see you in a second. We're going to slightly underexpose this shot as well because I really, really want to protect our highlights here. And uh, sometimes it can be very difficult to, uh, with uh, rapeseed because it does glow up exceptionally bright. So you really need to be careful with your filter choice on here as well. Um, I'm using a uh, 0.6 today. Um, so I've just got two stops of light on there and it should be exactly what we want for this particular shot. But you can see at the moment that light is just traveling across it and it looks stunning. So I'm really, really confident that we're going to nail a decent shot on this one. I'm so excited because I've been waiting for about three years to come and get this particular shot again. Now something really worth thinking about here is your composition and on this particular scene 50-50 split with the sky and the rapeseed field really really does work. Um, I'm going to possibly play around try a few different bits and pieces but the majority of the shots are going to be 50-50 with that horizon you know just about on the center and the barn just on the bottom left hand side so if you've got a grid on your camera it'll be on the bottom third axis just so you can uh, really sort of focus in on it but you can still include all that glory of this beautiful golden yellow field and blue sky in there. There's not going to be loads of compositions on this particular one for me because the shot I've got is the composition that I really, really want to be fair. I can move around the field a little bit and there are some other compositions, but none that I like quite as much as this. this really, this is what I'm after, this particular shot. So I'm going to sit tight here, hold on for the shot I want, and uh, I'm just going to try some various different focal lengths. So some I'll be zoomed in a little bit, some a little bit further out, and it just depends on what the light's doing to how I capture it. Uh, later on, I might sort of move a little bit further down the field. It depends how many people are here. I don't obviously want to go and get in the way someone although several people down here will walk into your shot it is a bit of a nightmare like that but you know you have to share it with other people it's just the way it is unfortunately as I said before this is pretty much a, a waiting game on this particular shot just to try and get the shadow and the light just right I mean if you take it with all shadow or all light it just doesn't kind of work it's not so dramatic but if you have a nice band of light just through the center on the barn then it's absolutely a1 so that's what we're hoping for I don't think I've been quite so excited in my photography for quite a while. This is just epic conditions. It's absolutely stunning out here and the light rolling across is just making everything look so, so good. Uh, I'm really, really confident that we've already nailed a shot, but I'm just going to stick it out because I'm just enjoying it so much and uh, see what else we can get. I might try and go for a little panorama later on if I can, but panoramas on this particular scene can be very, very tricky when you're trying to shoot the light, purely because the light's changing as you're trying to sweep across. Obviously, we can get a very, very fast shutter speed on this one and we can be fairly quick about it, but you're never going to be quite perfect on it. So uh, we'll see how that one goes and uh, maybe I'll include it, maybe I won't. But for the time being, I'm just sticking to the long lens shot and uh, just waiting to pick my moments for that light. Uh, I might even put the drone up later on and see if I can get some pictures with the drone just above it. So uh, there's all sorts of possibilities here. And uh, like I say, I'm really, really excited. The sun's just gone behind a cloud for the minute. So uh, I'm going to have a little break, look around, maybe have a look for some other compositions, see if there's anything else that looks really lightly. If it doesn't, I'm going to stick here and just keep waiting out for that nice uh, light and shadow to uh, form on there. We're not going to be bothered too much by the uh, rapeseed sort of blowing around in the wind here today. It's not really going to cause us too much of an issue. So we don't need to really sort of boost our ISO up and go on a, a faster shutter speed. We're, uh, we're going to be able to sort of cope with it because we're shooting in quite bright conditions. So uh, we're going to have a fast shutter speed anyway, so it won't really affect it. Plus, to be fair, if uh, the rapeseed in the front of the scene is moving, I don't really care. It's not integral to the scene. It's the colour that's important. The integral part is going to be the Dutch barn itself, and that's what our focus is on. And of course, that's not going to move. So uh, it doesn't really, really matter if this stuff does. One thing worth noting is when you come to a field like this you are going to go home absolutely covered in yellow. It's pretty much unavoidable so don't wear your best togs down here because you are going to go home in a little bit of a state. 
small price to pay when you're in somewhere like this and you can get such a wonderful scene. The wind has just switched around and uh, that might actually play to our advantage. It's got bitterly cold now, but uh, the sky, it's, uh, it was obscuring the sun. It's just starting to move across. So uh, hopefully in a couple of minutes, we might actually see a little bit of light forming just down there on that barn. Um, it looks like it's gonna go that way, but we've got this big storm cloud behind it. So it really is looking rather nice at the moment. I'm really confident we might nail a shot here. We're just waiting for that light to come through the clouds and the light can be such a cruel mistress. It teases you relentlessly. There's little bits of light just coming through, but it's not quite where we want it, not quite how we want it. It's everything but, but we're gonna hold on because it looks like it might be about to happen. Just been treated to some absolutely stunning light on the Dutch barn at the moment. The whole field is lit up and we're just waiting to get that elusive shadow just to come in as well so we can try and get some dappled light in the scene and really make it. But this scene looks fantastic because we've got a really dark sky just on the left-hand side of the barn. So it really is contrasting really nicely with it. So really confident we've got a decent shot. Well, sadly, it looks like that great light that we had has finally left us and to be expected, to be fair. But what a day. Had an absolutely fantastic trip down here to Dutch Barn. Hopefully we've nailed two or three shots out of it. Couldn't be more happy. I'll stick a couple of these shots up. They're all very similar, but uh, hopefully you'll like them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, we just got treated to a last gasp, little bit of light, but it's all gone behind a cloud now. So that's pretty much game over. Um, I hope you enjoyed these shots and uh, I hope you've enjoyed Dutch Barn today. If you have, please do hit that like button. It really does help the video to get out. And if you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.